Greetings from Life and Life Ministries. I am Reverend Michelle Young, and I'm so excited to meet with you again because God is returning for a church without spot and wrinkle, and we are the church of Jesus Christ. If you are saved, if you have invited Jesus Christ to come into your life, to be Lord of your life, Lord of all, because if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And if you are part of the church of Jesus Christ, we've got to be ready. God is putting us through divine military training and he is returning soon. And there is something that's really heavy in my heart. And I, and I spoke and I shared with you last time, and I'm going to share and continue t um, right now, where repentance is concerned. You see, saints, you need to understand that w for too long, we have been told that repentance is we're sorry for our sin. Most of us don't even know how to confess sin. Most of us don't even understand renunciation of sin. And I need to say to you, if you haven't heard the message from last week, then you need to go up on YouTube and listen to it. It's been posted there or on, on our Facebook, Life and Life Ministries. But what I want to, to encourage you right now to really get into your spirit is that repentance and renunciation of sin must be followed by deliverance so that you would experience true freedom from sin and be able to walk in the newness of what you have chosen and determined to live. Let me say that again. If you don't understand what repentance and renunciation is, well, you've got to come and understand that. And that's what I'm teaching you. But you need to know that it must be followed by deliverance. And this is the reason why we have not turned from our wicked ways. Because in the church, deliverance is not considered what the Bible says it is. Deliverance is a children's bread. We are the children of God. Deliverance is something that goes hand in hand with repentance. And then you can experience true freedom from sin. So you will not go back to the wickedness. You will not go back to the evil. You will turn from your wicked ways. So the benefits of repentance are that we must, we receive forgiveness from God. There's reconciliation with God. There's the repair of the breach between us and God, others and ourselves. All of this is what you're going to be looking for. This is the fruit. Taking away of guilt and torment associated with sin. Cleansing of our heart and renewal of our mind. So saints, here's what I want to say to you. This land that we live in is been plagued. It's been plagued and ravaged with sin. And the church, when the church of Jesus Christ turns from its wicked ways, this land will be healed. And I want to, to, to say to you that in Joel 1, 13 to 14, the land was ravaged and plundered by locusts and insects. There was a plague. I'm going to read this passage to you. God reminded the people to cry out to him, to repent and to look forward for the outpouring of his spirit. I'm saying to you, God is calling the land of Trinidad and Tobago that is being ravaged and plundered by locusts and insects that is representative of sin. I'm not talking about real locusts and insects. I'm saying the locust of sin, the insect of sin, the things that's destroying families, the things that's destroying the church. There is a plague in the nation. And God is calling to us to begin to cry out to him, to repent and to look forward that he will heal the land by bringing revival. He will heal the land by pouring out his spirit. And I'm going to read to you from Joel 1, 13 to 14. Gird yourselves and lament, you priests. Wail, you who minister before the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God, for the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast, 
Call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Saints, he is calling us in the church. First, the ministers at the altar to come and lie in sackcloth all night, all day, crying out in repentance for the sin of the people of God and the sin of the nation. We are called to consecrate a fast and assemble, assemble and gather the elders, gather the inhabitants and cry out to the Lord. Saints, I want us to understand that in Joel 2, 12 to 13, the word of God says, Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Turn to God, saints, with all your heart. Go deep, cry out to him. Turn to God with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your heart. Ask God to change the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful. Now, I'm saying all this to you. And before I continue, I want to I I share this. If you want to come and take some time to tarry with the Lord, join us on a Friday at 45 Anna Street, Life and Life Ministries. We tarry with the Lord from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can come from any part any part of that day or all day, and begin to cry out. Father, we cry out to you. We renounce our rebellion. We renounce our sin. Cry out. Worship him. Begin to learn. We will teach you things that you can apply to your life from the word of God. We want to invite you to our Sunday service at 5 p.m. We want to invite you to our prayer meeting at Tuesday, 4 p.m. We gather outside the church in the open air, and we have prayer meeting, and we have Bible study at 5.45 p.m. We want to invite you to join us. And now I'm going to continue because now you know where to find us. I want to say to you right now, saints, we have got to begin to understand that God wants to deliver us of sin. God wants to set us free. I want to tell you about deliverance that is the children's bread. Deliverance ensures that when he looks at you, he sees himself in you. So that when the enemy looks at you, the enemy will not find anything of himself. Remember what Jesus said. He said, when the evil one shall come, he will not find anything in me. God is saying to you, children of God, he wants to purge you. So that when he looks at you, he sees you changing more and more into his image and likeness. When the enemy looks at you, the enemy will not see anything of himself in you. You see, what is happening to us? We've forgotten. We are body, soul, and spirit. Your spirit is where the spirit of God comes in when you invite Jesus to come in and take over your life. Your spirit man is sealed, but your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, that part of us has to be transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can clearly discern the will of God. Saints, our mind, which is our will, our emotions, we have to submit that to the cross. We have to bring that under the cross. That area of us is where the enemy has entered and there are areas where he's taken up, he's taken up a board. And some of you may be offended. Yes, Christians can't have demons lodged in their mind, lodged in their soul, lodged in their emotions. And that is where many of us, we are not being set free of those things. Because one, we don't know how to break agreement and renounce and repent of those things. And we also do not accept, many of us do not accept that we need to command those demons to leave our mind, leave our soul, leave our emotions in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to, to say to you right now, and I want you to keep this in mind, that it's never 
too late for anyone here that's listening and feels as if they are in bondage and feels as if they can't read their Bible and they can't pray. What God wants is for you to begin to repent of sin and begin to cry out as I'm going to speak over you right now so that you get deliverance in your soul, in your mind, in your emotions. I want you to know that deliverance is the ability to capture back what the enemy has stolen we have to possess our possessions. We are on Mount Zion in the mighty name of Jesus. And on Mount Zion, we shall possess our possessions. We must invoke the inheritance that Christ gave us. We must take back what the enemy stole from our home, our family, our finances, our peace, our joy, our health in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to declare over you because many of us are in bondage in our mind. And I want us to understand the battle is in the mind. Go up on Life and Life Ministries on YouTube and begin to listen to those messages. Battle of the mind. If Satan can control your mind, he can take over the rest of you. So I want you to know, you have to know how to repent and renounce things that is in, in, is in your mind. And I'm going to speak over you right now. Father, I invoke the fire of God and the break anointing to go forth through the airwaves as I begin to speak over the people of God right now. I pull down over your life the stronghold of confusion in your life, in the mighty name of Jesus. Every seat of confusion in your life be broken down in the mighty name of Jesus. As I speak the word, Psalm 18, 44 to 45, strangers shall submit to me. Strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their hiding place. And what that means is the demons are going to begin to leave your mind. They leave through your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth right now in Jesus' mighty name. Let the storm of confusion within your mind be still in the mighty name of Jesus. Every cloud of confusion that has enveloped your mind fade away now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power that wants to destroy your life, I command those powers to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit, every mind blanking spirit in, in, in the minds of the people come out now and go to the pit in the mighty name of Jesus. Mind binding spirits, I command you come out of the minds of the people right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every faulty foundation in your life, receive the fire of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I fire back on your behalf every arrow of mind destruction that was fired into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I fire back full force in the mighty name of Jesus from where it came from and I command those demons to the pit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command your minds to receive the divine touch of God right now and be relieved in the mighty name of Jesus. The fire of God is purging minds right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cast down every evil imagination in your heart right now. Evil imagination, go to the pit in the mighty name of Jesus. I bring into captivity every area of your thought life to the obedience of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, right now, I seal off every doorway of evil uncontrollable thoughts in the minds of your people right now and in their life in the mighty name of Jesus with the blood of Jesus. I scatter into pieces every evil imagination that comes up against you in the mighty name of Jesus. I command all imaginations contrary to your prayer life to be defeated in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Right now, I cast down and bring to naught every demonic imagination coming up against you and your family in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, even as spirits lodged in the mind begin to leave as you deliver your people, Father, begin to purge their mind right now. Begin to purge their soul. Purge their emotions, Father. Anything you did not plant, any deposit that you did not put in there, Father, I command to leave right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask you right now to begin to pour through the minds of the people your fire, your blood in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Uh -huh.